Hi everyone, this is part three of Support Vector Machines Classifier and today we'll be covering Soft Margin SVM. In the previous sessions, what we did were we had covered in two parts Hard Margin SVM where we looked into the details of both the primal formulation and the dual formulation of Hard Margin SVMs. Okay, And to, in today's session, we're going to extend those ideas and as part of it, the first thing we're going to see is what are the limits of the hard margin SVM that we derived. And let's look at that. And that limit is going to be assessed based on a data set which is not linearly separable. Okay. So we know from our past two videos that if the data is linearly separable, the hard margin SVM does the hyperplane separation. But when the data is not linearly separable, then what happens? Okay, so this is what actually gets us to a point where we're going to be saying if the data is not linearly separable, the hard margin will not find any feasible solutions. So in this particular example, we have plus one, which is the dark circles and the minus one, which is the empty circles. We have had a dark circle move over into the into the space of the minus one which is the, with the empty circles and the same way we have multiple empty circles moved into the space with the dark circles and this is how things are going to be in practice where linear separation is not always feasible so in such a case the hard margin SVM fails to give us a solution and what gets to happen with the dual formulation which we derived on hard margin SVM is the alphas will start converging to infinity Okay, and that is a problem. So therefore, we now have to come up with an idea to resolve this problem. And let's look at that idea and also the formulations for that idea as we go along. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to allow the errors to stay in our optimization. Okay, so what that means is the errors in this particular context, if the errors are there, then let that error stay, but we will actually compute a cost for those errors. So in this particular case, the difference between where that error is, in this case, the dark circle is in this side, uh, with respect to the margin space where it is supposed to be constrained, that difference is being called the psi. So this psi, symbol is indicating to us the violation of the margin okay so instead of these data points to be constrained within their own margin now they violated it and that difference is going to be the violation of the margin okay and for the values that are greater than zero so xi is only greater than zero for all the data points where there's a violation of the margin which means the dark circles came over to the site which it was not expected to be, and then the circle, empty circles have gone over to the other side, which again, they were not expected to be. So these are these data points and these xi are also called slack variables. Okay. And now what we are going to do as part of our optimization is we are going to make small adjustments in the optimization to penalize for the given uh, xi values. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to be updating the constraint that we had earlier, which is this is very similar to last time, where we have had a yi into w transpose xi plus b greater than equal to 1. Now we have had an extra term here where we are separating the total errors or the given error contributed because of the violation of the margin. So that's the first change we make into the constraint. Okay. The second change we are going to be making is to the objective function. So what we want to do is we want to penalize the objective function for any of the violations of the margin. Therefore, we are going to add that back into the minimization objective function. Minimize of half w norm the whole square plus c is our hyperparameter. And for this hyperparameter, we are multiplying it with the sum of xi values, which is the sum of all violations of the particular margin. Okay, So this is the new primal formulation that we have come up with. 
that we will try and optimize the solution for. Now, having talked about primal formulation, we also are interested in finding the dual formulation. And there is a very strong reason why we are doing dual formulation in the last two series, which you will start understanding when we do kernels. But right now, we are going to be looking at the dual formulation. And obviously, the first assumption that underlines uh, the dual formulation is, is that the primal formulation is firstly convex. Therefore, we can use the convex theory, which gives us the theorem that the results of both the primal and the dual formulations are the same, if it is a convex problem. Okay. So now moving on, let's look at the dual formulation. So dual formulation on a Lagrangian basis is very similar to the dual formulation Lagrangian that we saw in our previous hard margin SVM, where we have half W norm the whole square plus this is the new term where we have added in the penalty C, which is a hyperparameter for the sum of xi i's, plus this is very similar or is the same as the one we had in our hard margin SVM, which is the sum of alpha i's into 1 minus xi i. This 1 minus xi i is coming because we changed the constraint. Earlier it was 1 minus y i times w transpose x i plus b. Now it is 1 minus xi i minus y i times w transpose x plus p. So this is one of those terms that have got changed. And also we have an additional term, which is the mu i xi i. Okay. So this is the Lagrangian we have written down, where we definitely do know the Lagrangian penalty term is the alpha. Yeah. And then the parameter, hyperparameter for us to penalize for the margin violations is the c. And xi i is indicating uh, and the, the extent to which a particular data point is violating the margin. Okay. All right. Now, very important to note, the higher value of C penalizes this trading set more and more and constrains it to a space to ensure the xi i's are limited. So that's very important to know. Now, when we take a differentiation. I mean, we take derivatives for this particular Lagrangian, and when we simplify, what we end up with with this particular formula, which is again a minimization problem. So what it what it means is we are trying to minimize over an alpha half of summation of alpha i alpha j. I mean alpha i alpha j y i y j x transpose i x transpose j. So this should look similar, familiar to you from our hard margin SVM minus the sum of alpha i's, which again is similar to our previous one, conditional to alpha i y i is equal to zero. Okay. So most of this particular derivative looks very similar to what we have had. And one important thing to notice, we don't have w's here, we don't have xi i's here, we don't even have b's here, which are all constraints and the parameters and values. We don't have them here. Okay, the C is brought back in here as part of boundary condition of how far the this particular values should be ranging, and that should be between a zero and a C. Okay, so that's the key formulation with which we will be running a gradient descent or any other optimization algorithm for us to find the values of the parameters. Once we have alphas, W and B can be calculated as W is equal to the sum of alpha i, y i, x i, which is similar to what we saw in hard margin SVM. And also B is 1 minus y i w transpose x i by y i, which is nothing but y i minus w transpose x i, which is something in the linear regression space. This is what we typically assume as the error, where we're given the actual point and that is the predicted point. Okay. So the important thing to take away is the results from both the dual formulation and the primal formulations are going to be the same. And thus, we have two of the formulations which we will be using in our optimization. And in our subsequent lecture, we will connect all the dots of why we spend time for dual formulations by going through the details of support vector machines, kernels, and the kernel tricks. Okay, So that's all for this particular lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Good luck to you. Like it if you enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye.